So today we are studying a uh, reading Ramayan. So if you have this English book, uh, page number 248, that's where we ended last time. Tara's grief, that is the title of this chapter. And Tara is the wife of King Vali. Okay. So Vali was killed by Shri Ram. As Tara came wailing out of Kishkanda, someone cried to her, Tara, save yourself and your son. Vali is killed and our enemies are at our gates. But she snarled at that warner. My husband lies dying outside the city and you speak to me of saving myself. My life has already gone from me. Crying his name, she ran to where Wali lay with Ram's arrow in his chest. Never before had anyone vanquished Wali in battle. He had cast great rocks at his enemies as his father of light did his vajra of a thousand joints. He had killed countless asurs. Wali's roar had been like thunder. His courage had been deeper than Inder's. Tara could hardly believe her eyes when she saw he lay on the ground, gasping his last and his killer so terribly bright above him. Tara fell on her knees beside Wali and clasped him to her. Angad wept as loudly as his mother. Tara gazed at the arrow plunged into her husband's chest. She felt it gingerly with her fingers and sobbed. Wali's eyes were shut. He had drifted off on the sweet pain and the uncanny peace of his death. Tara cried, why don't you open your eyes and look at me? It is I, Tara, your wife. Come, my lord, let us go back to the palace. I will wash your face with cool water and you can sleep for a while. Then you will be well again. But Wali said nothing. Only his breath still rasped cruelly from him. Rattling his torn chest, Tara stared at him for some moments, her tears flowing as if they had life and passage of their own. She sighed. This bed you lie on is hard. You are not used to such a hard bed. But perhaps a more wonderful Kishkanda calls you from another world. Oh, Wali, am I so unfeeling that I can see you like this and my heart doesn't break and my life fly out of my worthless body? Why didn't you listen to me when I warned you this morning? Wali, I'm afraid Angad will be at Sugriv's mercy now. Your brother cannot love you for what you have done to him. Angad look at your father for the last time. She turned her face up to Sugriv, who stood hugging himself as if he was very cold. He crooned to himself, shifting from one foot to the other, a restless, anxious monkey. Tara said to him, how happy you must be, Sugriv. Your brother is dead and the kingdom is yours. With your human friend's help, your long ambition has been fulfilled. Wali, why don't you speak to me? It is I, Tara, who kneel beside you. She sobbed. She cried. She would fast to death from this moment. Hanuman came to her and said kindly, All of us reap the fruit of our karma. Why should we mourn anyone else? When we are all pitiable, like bubbles, riding briefly on a current until they burst. This whole world is a transient place, a dream. Tara, your dharma is not to die for Wali, but to live for Angad. Your husband was noble and gracious. Save for one crime, he will find the heaven meant for the brave. Your people look to you for strength, and Angad must perform the last rites for his father. My queen, it is a time when your womanly strength must give solace to others. Let Angad fulfill his sacred dharma as a son, and then let him be crowned Yuvraj. Tara, compose yourself. But Tara only sobbed louder. She called out to Wali again and again. She cried that she would die beside him. Suddenly, Wali's eyes flew open, blazing with death, and his gaze lighted on his brother, who stood guilty as a murderer. Wali called softly, Sugriv, come near. I want to speak to you. Sugriv padded Warily up to him on tiptoe, Wali whispered, Now I feel sorry that I hurt you for so long. My arrogance and the fear in my heart made me mad. Fate was envious of our old love, my brother. 
She conspired to set us against each other. Take the kingdom from me, Sugriv. I give it to you gladly because I know you will make a good king. But come nearer and hear my last wishes. He reached out and grasped his brother's hand and Sugriv's eyes brimmed over. Wali said, now Angad has only you to depend on. Look after him like your own son. He is more precious to me than my life and I leave him in your care. He is brave. If young and a fine warrior, he will prove himself noble. And Tara, Sugriv, my Tara is wise and seasoned in statecraft. Consult her about everything you do. She has been most of my wisdom while I ruled. He paused in pain before continuing. Then there is this Ram who has come among us like providence. Be sure to help him with all your heart for he is great and glorious beyond our understanding. He has come to the world to dispel its darkness. Help him with all your might. Nothing is more important. Now take my garland and wear it around your neck. Take it quickly before life leaves me or its power will fade. Sugriv wept like an orphan child. Gone was any joy he had felt that Wali was slain. Gone any eager anticipation of kingdom. His hands shaking. He gently removed Inder's golden garland from Wali's neck and draped it around his own. Wali called his son to him. He drew Angad close and kissed him. My child, your life has changed. Don't chase after pleasure anymore. Accept whatever comes to you, joy or grief, calmly. From now you must please your uncle to grieve. He may not cosset you as I did, but obey him in all things. Treat his enemies as yours. Don't be too attached to anyone, nor coldly detached. Adopt a middle course. Remember, listen to Sugriv and grow used to his guardianship. Wali reached out to stroke his son's cheek a last time and left. Life went out of him. Tara screamed long and piercingly. The warner, chieftain, Neil went up to the dead, dead king's body and drew the arrow from his chest. Tara made Angad prostrate himself at his father's feet. Sugriv came to Ram with folded hands and tears flowing down his face. You have kept your word and Wali is dead, but I feel no joy when I see Tara weep. Angad fatherless and my brother lying on the earth as a corpse. I caused Wali's death from my greed, and I regret it bitterly. I want no kingdom anymore. I must seek the peace of my soul. I will return to Rishimuk and sit in penance for the crime of killing my brother. How many times we fought each other, Wali and I. How often he held my life in his hands, and always he cried, Leave my sight. I haven't the heart to kill you. My brother loved me, but I did not understand him. I should never have wished him dead. I am a terrible sinner. I am not fit to rule. Fingering the garland around his neck, he sobbed. Look at my brother's generosity even after I had him killed. He made me wear this heavenly thing. Ram, I will tell my people to seek out your Sita for you, and they will find her, but I cannot bear to live any longer. Not even in Rishimuk will a sinner like me find peace. There is only one way for me. I will make a pyre for myself and die. Ram stood disconsolate to hear Sugriv raving like this. Tara rose from Wali's side and came to him. Ram of Ayodhya, I have heard you are merciful. Take pity on me and kill me with the same arrow that took my husband's life. We shall be united again and he will be happy. You have been separated from your wife. You can understand my pain, noble prince. You cannot want Wali to suffer as you do. Send me to him, Ram. He needs me. No sin will cling to you. I swear, not even the one of killing a woman. Ram said to her, You are a great king's wife. You should not give in so tamely to despair. Fate rules this world, and all that happens here is by Brahma's will. Once Angad is crowned, you Raj, you will be happy again. Fate is all there is in this world. All of us are her playthings. We begin and end by her dictates. 
then how can we resist her during our gr brief lives? Only fate knows what is best for us and what our ends are. Only she knows which fork on the long road we must take. Only she knows why and what lies around the next corner. All that is, is by fate. And at last she takes us into heaven as she has taken Wali today. Put away this despair. No woman whose husband was a warrior and whose son is a warrior should give in to grief. Be brave, O queen, and perform the last rites for Wali. Lakshman spoke to Sugriv and they arranged for the royal palanquin to be fetched from the city. When they heard about the final reconciliation between Sugriv and Wali and of Sugriv's remorse, the warners gathered around again. Near where Wali had fallen, they heaped a tall pyre with fragrant sandalwood. When they had bathed his body in the river, they laid their dead king upon it with honor. Holding back his tears, Angad touched his father's pyre alight with a flaming branch. They prayed for the peace of Wali's soul as the flames licked him into ashes. They went back to the river and bathed and offered tarpan to the departed one. Then they returned to Ishkanda. Okay, so this is the end of this chapter. So anybody, any question, comment? If not, then we'll continue with the next one. King of the Vanars. The Vanars gathered outside Kishkanda. Outside the cave, they led into the secret city. The monkey chieftain were all there. Anxiety was uh, writ large on their faces. It was plain in their uneasy movements and nervous chattering. At the cunningly concealed cave mouth, Hanuman came to Ram and said, by your grace, Sugriva has the kingdom of his ancestors. Advise him what to do next. He feels guilty and talks of killing himself. Our people are alarmed. They want a strong king to rule them. Ram said to Hanuman, to keep my father's word, I may not enter any city or village even until the 14 years of my exile are over. But let Sugriva be taken into Kishkanda and crowned. Ram turned to Sugriv and said aloud before all the warners, don't waste your grief. If you are truly sorry, go into Kishkanda and take up the reins of kingdom. Crown Angad Yuvraj. He is a noble prince and he will bring honor to Wali's name and yours. Ram paused and looked around him at the trees of spring festive with flowers and the birds full of songs in their branches. He said slowly, it is Shravan. The monsoon will soon be upon us. Lakshman and I will find a cave on the mountain to live in until the rains have passed. For four months, it will rain without let. But when the month of Kritik arrives, you must keep your promise to me that you will find Sita. I will wait until then. But now go into your city, O king of jungle, and be crowned. It is a time of transition when your people need you most of all. Be strong and sit upon your throne with the dharm beside you. I know you will be a great king. Go, my friend. Go in peace. Sugriv knelt at Ram's feet for his blessing, but Ram raised him up and embraced him. The princes of Ayodhya went back into the forest from where they had come. Sugriv entered the hidden city of Kishkanda and was crowned king of the Vanars. At the same ceremony, he made Angad the Yuvraj and embraced him as if he were his own son. Bitterness had melted from Sugriv's heart. Only remorse for his brother's death remained. Then at last his wife Ruma came to him. Crooning in joy, he collapsed her to him and his life began anew. Sugriv began a long and happy rule as king of olden and free race of the Vanus. Next chapter is the reigns and after. Ram and Lakshman went to the mountain called Prasarvan. They found a large dry cave, its floor so smooth and clean that it may have been created just for the princes of Ayodhya to live in. They had barely laid out beds of grass for themselves 
when the heavens opened for four months with hardly a day when they saw the sun. It poured on the world. The wind howled in the valley below the cave and great trees bent their crowns to the power of Vayu and Indra. The jungle grew visibly with the sucker of monsoon when the sun did emerge from behind scudding cloud banks and shone down into the world for an hour or two. The brothers marveled at the lush creepers that wound themselves around giant trees, almost a fresh foot each day, and thrust gaudy flowers and sensuous pistols at the steaming forest. The trees were covered in soft new leaves, and the grass and the foliage all seethed with warm, wet light. The animals of the jungle mated in abundance during the rains, beside swollen rivers and on tangled hills. The birds in the trees were all lovers. Serpents entwined in damp nests and insects mounted their mates under flowering bushes and slabs of rock in fervent ritual. Ram was lonely. His blood coursed madly for Sita during the nights of the waxing moon that flitted across the shrouded sky behind stormy rags of cloud. The prince lay sleepless at the cave mouth and every beam of renegade soam was a shaft of longing in his heart. Every streak of lightning a jagged impatience for the monsoon to end. Once past midnight, Lakshman was aroused from a deep slumber by the sound of his brother sobbing. He awoke to see Ram bereft at the silvery cave mouth. Tears flowing down his dark face, grief having its way with him. In Ram's eyes was such torment it seemed he had taken the sins of all created beings upon himself and suffered in their place. Lakshman put his arms around his brother as he would a child and held him close. Ram wept. Our lives are ruined. Not without reason did Kekei send us into exile. Sita, where are you, my love? With whom do you spend this night? Lakshman stroked his head and said, Ram, don't let your mind be swayed by wild suspicions or your will broken by sorrow. The rains are almost over. In just a week, even sooner, Sugriv will begin his quest for Sita. Don't forget who you are in this dark jungle, O prince of all the world. You will kill the Rakshas and have Sita back. Only be brave. Ram grew quiet. He smiled at Lakshman and took his hand. It has passed now, child. Like a storm, my sorrow had passed, has passed. Lakshman, there is no one like you in all the world. No one else could have saved me as often as you have done. You are right. I will wait for autumn and then Sugriv will keep his word to me. Ram sighed. It is hard to wait, but wait I must. Lakshman said, I am restless too. But it cannot be long now before these wretched rains pass and we can begin our search with the sun in our faces. How I long for the sun, Ram. Ram cried, my loving brother, best among men, and he hugged Lakshman. The next day, the sun shone with the Sarilin sky that had not a cloud in it. In Kishikanda, Hanuman looked up and knew it was time Sugriv kept his word to find Sita. But the first months of his kingship saw Sugriv mired in orgy of indulgence, as if to make up for his stark years of exile. The Vanar left the governance of his kingdom to his ministers and steeped himself in wine and women, as if to live just by them, to heal the wounds of his years of terror by them to forget Wali's death by them, even as if to find immortality through pleasure. When the sky cleared, Sugriv had forgotten all about Ram and his prom promise to him. They had a month of clear weather, of days when the sun dried and sodden forest, of nights when a charmed moon hung low in a lucid sky. Still, Sugriv made no move to keep his word to Ram. Indeed, he seldom emerged from his harem. One day, Hanuman went to see his king, who lay drunk among his women. 
the son of the wind said quietly, My lord, you have a kingdom now and your wife back. All the pleasures of Kishkanda and the power of its throne was yours to enjoy. But have you forgotten the friend who gave you all these things? What about your pledge to Ram? That you would find his Sita as soon as the monsoon passed. The sun has shone on us for a month. It is time you called your warners to you and combed the earth for the prince's wife. He waits patiently in his cave for your help. Don't delay any longer, Sugriv, lest Ram's love turn to anger. Sugriv blinked his wine red eyes. The merriment faded on his lips and he grew very still. For a moment he seemed to struggle with some inner conflict. His eyes blazed briefly at being disturbed at his pleasure. Then his expression sobered and he clapped his hands for a guard to fetch Neil, his Senapati. When Neil came, Sugriv said to him, send our messengers abroad. Summon my warners from every jungle in the world. In 15 days, I want them all in Kishkanda. Those who do not come shall die. Let Angad collect our forces here in the city. Hurry, Neil. Sugriv turned to Hanuman with a smile. Thank you, my friend, for reminding me. And now, if you allow me. Hanuman bowed and left the harem. Sugriv called for another flagon of wine as he turned back to the delectable Ruma and the others. So any comment? Grief and anger. More than a month had passed after the monsoon, a month of aching nights, when he lay awake and Sita's face and her tender form drifted before his eyes like visions and stoked his despair. One day, Ram broke down. Lakshman returned from his foray into the jungle where he had gone to hunt. He found Ram laid out at the cave mouth. His face was tear-stained and anguished. His mind had sought relief from its agony in unconsciousness. Lakshman sprinkled sparkling stream water on his brother's face and Ram revived. He sat up, shaking his head in misery, helpless, pleading in his eyes. Lakshman cried, I should never have left you alone. You must not torture yourself with memories. They only rob you of your courage. The rains are over. Sugriv must already have sent his people on the quest for Sita. Take heart, Ram. The way ahead is shorter than you think. You'll be with her soon. But Ram said, the season and the mood of the forest inflame me with longing. There are times when I cannot help myself. Lakshman, she is in the hands of a devil. My heart tells me he is no ordinary Rakshas, but a great creature of darkness, and I fear for her life. Sugriv swore he would begin his search for Sita as soon as the rain broke, rains broke. Sharad has been with us for more than a month and there is no news from the Vanar. These four months have been like a hundred years for me, but it seems Sugriv has forgotten his promise. He is indifferent now that he has what he wanted. You say I must be calm, but I cannot help myself anymore. My body is on fire. Go to Sugriv and tell him from me. The most contemptible man is he who forgets his friends after he has used them and has no further need for them. Ask him if he wants to hear the sound of my bowstring again. Remind him how I killed Wali and of the debt he owes me. Rouse him from his lust. Wake him to my pain and my need. Tell Sugriva, I said, the portal through which Wali left the world is still open. If you break your word to me, you will follow your brother out of this life. Hurry, Sugriv. Before despair becomes my master and I come to kill you. You are still my friend, but don't mock my friendship any longer. They had heard of Sugriv's long departure from some wandering warners. Lakshman said softly, the monkey does not deserve his throne. I will go and kill him in his harem. Let Angad rule Kishkanda. Wali was right. He would have helped you sooner than his brother has cared to. Sugriv has forgotten. He owes you everything he has today. Lakshman strapped on his quiver. At once Ram said, I wish I had not showed you my anger. You must not be hasty, Lakshman. 
give Sugriv every chance to justify himself. Before you even think of killing him, tell him gently that by the covenant we made with Agni as our witness, he and I are friends for life. He must have reason for his delay. Be patient when you speak to him. Speak kindly. Lakshman bowed to his brother as formally as he might have in the Sabha of Ayodhya and strode away through the jungle toward the secret city of the Varners. As he went, his mind swung between reason and anger. He must obey Ram and give Sugriva every chance to explain himself. But if the monkey king could not satisfy him, Lakshman would not wait for Ram to come and kill Sugriva. He would do it himself. Didn't the nervish creature know Ram's plight? Had he place in his heart only for his own grief, such a selfish heart should be cloven with an arrow. Lakshman could not bear to see Ram as he had been these past months. He couldn't bear the hunted look in his eyes, the lines of pain that had appeared on his face. As all men do who love another as intensely as Lakshman did his brother, he felt Ram's anguish as if it were his own. At times he felt it even more than Ram did. During the long nights when he sat and watched his brother toss and turn in his sleep and wept for him. His bow clasped in his hand, gleaming like a silver of a rainbow with its jeweled inlay, Lakshman stopped grimly toward Vishkanda. Lakshman goes to Kishkanda. Kishkanda lay between two green... Uh, this yes. is Raj. Yes, Raj. One question on top of... Oh, sorry. Uh, top of page 250... Page 256, uh, first line, Lakshman had gone into the jungle where he had gone to hunt. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the Kshatriyas were hunting. Yeah, Kshatriyas did hunt, but this hunting could be for the fruits. It doesn't mean that they killed the animals and ate. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, I was just wondering because usually... Yeah, Kshatriyas, Kshatriyas did hunt, but mm -hmm. I don't see anywhere written where they killed the animals and ate them. Mm -hmm. when it comes to Ram and Lakshman. Yeah. Okay? So, so hunting word is used when we look for the fruits and the flowers also. Okay? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Lakshman goes to Kishkanda. Kishkanda lay between two green peaks. It was cleverly concealed in a valley into which the only way was through a long tunnel high on one hillside. As Lakshman climbed to the mouth of the tunnel, he saw the fierce Warner guard posted outside it. Those Warners did not know him, and when they saw him coming, they began to jump up and down as monkeys do when they are alarmed. They bared their fangs and danced about, waving long arms, snarling, frightened themselves, trying to frighten him away. When they saw he came on, they scrambled to pick up rocks and tear up young trees with which to attack him, but his face burning like the flames of Yuganth. Lakshman approached in quiet fury. In his hand and sensitive to its archer's mood, his bow burned with its own fire. When he reached behind him to draw an arrow from his quiver, the warners lost their nerve. They dropped their rough weapons and fled. These monkeys ran to their king's wooden palace. One cried, a warrior with the death on his brow, marches on your city, Sugriva. Another said, his bow was not made in this world and his arrows shine like time. Another whispered, he is no ordinary man. He comes like Yama. But Sugriva was drunk and he was lost in the long embraces of Tara, his dead brother's wife, now his own favorite. Bearing his fangs at them that they dared disturb him, he chattered angrily at the guards. 
He chased them out of his apartments, built quaintly half on the ground and half along the trunk and branches of an immense tree. But the king's ministers had gathered outside his palace. Terror stricken, they called for Angad, and he quickly summoned his army to the several entrances to the city hidden in the mountain. Lakshman saw the Varnar army marching out through the city gates. His eyes turned crimson and his hand shook on his bow. At the head of his legion, Angad came out to meet Lakshman. The young Varnar stood bravely before the Kshatriya. But not a word came from him because his tongue stuck to the roof of his mouth and his body trembled at the awesome power that Lakshman exuded. But the human prince said gently to Angad, go and tell your uncle that Lakshman has come to his gates. Ask him why he has not kept his word to my brother. If he has a shred of dharma, he should not break his solemn pledge. Give him my message and tell me what he says. Though the prince spoke gently, Angad sensed Lakshman's mood and the menace of him. He turned and ran back to Sugriv, who was at his endless pleasure while death had come to his gates. Angad burst in on the king, his uncle, who was making love with the prince's mother Tara. Angad turned his gaze away and cried, Lakshman is at our gates. But Sugriv was so drunk, he could hardly open his eyes. By now, all the monkeys of Kishkanda were shouting outside the king's palace. Sugriv heard the noise through his stupor and it roused him. Sugriv's ministers ran into him in panic. Their king rose unsteadily. He asked for water, with which he splashed his arms and face. The water stung him. He squealed at its coldness and shook his fur. At last, the warmer king was more or less away. He stood swaying slightly before his nephew and his ministers, but now his eyes were wide open and he asked in a clear voice, what is all the fuss about? Hanuman said, Ram and Lakshman are princes of Dharam. You swore friendship with them and they helped you recover your kingdom. Lakshman stands at your gates with his bow in his hand and our army is terrified because the unearthly thing shines so brightly. The prince's eyes burn in wrath, Sugriv. Tell him you mean to keep your word to Ram or we are all dead. Suddenly, Sugriv grasped the peril he was in. He gave a moan and cried, I have done nothing to offend the princes of Ayodhya. Why does Lakshman come here with anger in his eyes? Some enemy of mine has poisoned his mind against me. Not that I'm afraid of him. I am not afraid of him or of Ram. But it pains me that our friendship is at risk. Oh, the mind is fickle and the smallest slip is enough to kill sacred friendship. And you all know I owe Ram everything I have today. Hanuman said, you must reassure Lakshman that you have not forgotten your debt of gratitude. Ram is not really angry, only anxious, but you have lost track of the seasons. The monsoon is over. When skies were dark and rivers turbid, it has been tranquil Sharad for more than a month. While you have been happy at love and wine, Ram has pined for his wife. He counts not the seasons and months, but each moment of his life that passes without Sita. And everyone is like a wretched year to him. He has sent Lakshman to you in anguish. Don't be offended if the messenger's words are harsh. He has cause to be aggrieved. You say you are not afraid of Ram, but if he strings his bow, the three worlds cringe because he can extinguish them with his arrows. He loves you, Sugriv. Keep that love. Ram is more than you or I can imagine. Forgive me if I speak too plainly, but it is my dharam to save you from folly. Sugriv stood staringly, thoughtfully at his quiet minister. Slowly, the wine-sodden fog lifted from his mind. The Warner King bowed solemnly to Hanuman to acknowledge his wisdom. Sugriv sent his doorkeepers to escort Lakshman through the king's own underground passage. Like the sun entering a rain cloud, Lakshman came into Sugriv's palace. Along carved wooden terraces, curling corridors, polished halls, he was led through the labyrinth edifice. He paused at the threshold of the Antapur. He heard exquisite music within and saw the beautiful women of the Vanar's harem. 
the tinkling of their silver anklets, the warm, breathy whispering of their voices, the fragrance of their delicate bodies invaded him like a seductive army, growing confused. He pulled violently on his bowstring and Kishikanda shook to its foundations. And in the next chapter, we'll see Tara was sent to talk to Lakshman instead of Sugriva comes. So he used that diplomacy. So that's why it says this chapter, the diplomacy of Tara. So just let's read that chapter also. Sugriva turned pale when he heard the thunder of Lakshman's boasting. For all his boasting, he dared not face the angry prince. Terror gripped the Vanar king and his fur stood on end. He turned to the lovely Tara and said, My queen, this Kshatriya's real nature is gentle and he is as easily calmed as he is roused. Go to him, Tara. He will never show his anger to a woman. Pacify him, then bring him here and I will speak to him. Lakshman waited alone in a corner away from the eyes of the women of the harem when the lovely Tara came to him in the wooden hall where he stood, she sensed his tenseness and his fury. Hesitantly she came, her long eyes cast down and only half open from all the wine she had drunk with Sugriv. Her slender body quivered with fear like a lotus in a breeze. Yet she came with great poise and was entirely queenly. Lakshman knew who she was, but not why she had come. Thinking even that she had been sent to seduce him, he turned his back on her and stood glaring out a window. But Tara came softly up to him. She said, Be welcome to Kishkanda, O Kshatriya. But, great Lakshman, you come in anger. Tell me what is the cause of your rage, at which our city trembles. Who has been foolish enough to light a fire in a forest of dry trees? She touched him swift and deep, what man could ignore Tara's beautiful voice or her utterly feminine presence? This was not the kind of battle Lakshman relished. With an effort, he steadied himself and quietened the disconcerting tumult in his body. He said to her decorously, My lady, your husband has sent you to placate me, but don't be blind to what he has done. Once he became king. He has forgotten my brother Ram, who restored his kingdom to him. Wine and women are all his remembers, and dharam is far from his mind. These months that Sugriva has spent indulging himself, Ram has languished in the forest, with grief driving him to the edge of madness. Is this the friendship that Sugriva swore with Agni as his witness? He has betrayed us, and an ingrate comes to a bad end. Lakshman spoke quietly, but there was truth in his words and his eyes still smoldered dangerously. Tara did not reply at once. She considered what to say. Her task was a delicate and grave one, and she knew it. At last she said, Kshatriya, even great rishis fall prey to the temptations of calm. What then of a fickle monkey whose nature you well know? After years of being denied in the wilderness, Sugriv could hardly help indulging himself. He fell so avidly to pleasure that he left even the governance of the kingdom to his ministers. But noble Lakshman, Sugriv had no desire to hurt Ram or you. It isn't that he does not value your friendship. He was merely lost in a sensuous dream. You have woken him from his stupor. Now let Ram, who is tolerance embodied, Forgive him. Lakshman looked, his, look, looked at the bewitching queen and thought who could refuse her anything she wanted. But he also made no immediate reply, only gazed evenly at her. Tara said, I think you should also know, my lord, that Sugriv has already ordered his warners to come to Kishkanda. He means to send them forth in every direction on the quest for Sita. He did this even before you came here. Hundreds of thousands of monkeys from all over the world already fly to us at their king's command. She saw Lakshman give a start at this news 
she had subtly kept for the last. She saw his eyes soften and knew her little battle was won. She had saved Kishkanda and its king from immediate danger. Tara said, come with me to the Antpura. I can see you are pure and strong and will not tainted by its sights. Sugriv is waiting for you. She walked before him through winding, climbing simian corridors along knotted branches of the ancestral tree into which the complex palace was built. And they came to the Antapur, Sugriv's harem. Inside the Warner King sat upon a couch of gaudy brocade. He wore fine ornaments. He sat among his women with his arms around the delectable Ruma. Lakshman's fury sparked alive again. And Tara sighed to herself at how indiscreet her lord was. Sugriv sprang up when he saw Lakshman. The Kshatriya's eyes sparked with anger, but the ways of monkeys and men are a world apart. And little could Sugriv understand that seeing him with Ruma could infuriate the human as it did. He came forward guilelessly to greet the fair prince, shambling up to him, his long arms trailing the floor. He folded his hand solemnly to Lakshman and stood silent his moist brown eyes gazing at the warrior's face. Between his teeth, Lakshman said, a compassionate king who is concerned about the suffering of others gains fame for himself in the world. A truthful king who remembers favors he has received and is grateful for them deserves his renown. But a king who strays from dharam, who forgets his solemn oath sworn to his friend there is no one worse than him. There is redemption from every sin in this world. For Aishit, for even the murder of a Brahman. But where is the salvation for an ungrateful man? Sugriv, you lied to us when you swore you would help find Sita. Ram kept his word to you for your sake. He took Wali's life. But when you had what you wanted, you ignored Ram's need. The gates through which Wali went are not shut. If you don't honor your oath sworn before Agni, Ram's arrows will send you after your brother. Ram bids me tell you there is still time for you to relent. But hurry so grieve before both your time and his mercy run out. Lakshman spoke fiercely. It seemed the calmness that Tara had brought to his spirit was shaken at the sight of Sugriv at his dalliance while Ram was waiting in anguish for the Varner to find Sita. Tara wanted Sugriv to be quiet, lest in his inebriated anxiety, he say the wrong thing. She said quickly, you leap to the wrong conclusions, my prince. Sugriv is not a liar, nor has he forgotten his oath. Sugriv loves Ram. For Ram, this Varner will sacrifice everything, even his kingdom. Why he would gladly abandon Ruma and me. For Ram's sake. Even in my bed, my husband speaks of Ram. I have told you, mighty Lakshman, Sugriv has already called his legion warners to him to send them to the corners of the earth to seek Sita out. Shed your anger, good Kshatriya. The warners will discover Sita swiftly wherever. Yeah, I, no, no, no. They, they're at, they've written attached and all that, but they've missed it. As Tara. Yeah, certificate of liability. As Tara spoke of Sugriv's devotion to Ram, the transformation that came over Lakshman was quite marvelous. His body grew calm and a smile lit his handsome face like the sun breaking through dark clouds. Sugriv breathed a sigh of relief. His drunkenness had left him. He took Lakshman gingerly by his hand and led him into his apartment. He sat him down on a couch and crooning in affection said, how can you ever think I would forget Ram when I owe him everything I have today? Nothing can repay my debt to your brother. I may be just a warner, but I'm not such an ingrate. Not that a Kshatriya who can shoot one arrow through seven shal trees needs my help. But for what it is worth, all my resources are Ram's to use. Why my very life belongs to him. And when he sets out to kill the Rakshas who took Sita, I will follow him with my army. I will follow Ram anywhere. Let him forgive me just this once. Wringing his hands, he stood before Lakshmi. 
The vapors of anger had risen away from the prince's mind. He said slowly, with you at his side, loving Sugriv, Ram will surely vanquish his enemy. But now come with me to Prasarvan. Ram needs to see you to restore his faith. As for me, I spoke harshly only because I have watched my brother's anguish these five months and found it hard to bear. Sugriv, forgive me for what I said in Britishly. There was genuine sorrow in the Varner's eyes as he heard about Ram. He turned to Hanuman. My monkeys from Vindya and Himwan, Mahendra and Kalash, march on Kishikanda even now. Send word to them to make haste. Fifteen days was the limit, I said. Five have already passed. Ram is in pain. My people must be here in ten days. Before he had finished speaking, they heard an alarm in the streets below them and the noise came toward the palace. Through the window, Sugriv saw that his colorful people had begun to arrive from far flung parts of the earth. They came to his door with gifts for their king and he welcomed them graciously. When he had seen to the comfort of those first troops, Sugriv called for his palanquin. He climbed into it with Lakshman and they set out for Prasarvan. The hefty, long-limbed warner carriers loped through the forest, flying lightly through the lower branches of the trees when passage was difficult on the ground. They arrived at the cave to which Lakshman guided them with jungle directions of tree, rock and stream. By now, he was no stranger to the one and he knew how those who lived here found their way. Sugriv alighted from the wooden litter he came nervously into the Ram's presence. As soon as the Warner saw the prince, he gave a low cry and stretched himself on his face at Ram's feet. His tail coiled, his eyes lowered for shame, but Ram raised up the great monkey and embraced him. Only gently did he chide him, saying with a smile, my friend, dharam, earth and calm, should be of equal importance in one's life. To be aware only of calm is as dangerous as falling asleep on the brittle branch of a tree. I hope you remember your promise to me, Sudhir, that you would find my Sita. His eyes wandering everywhere except to Ram's face, Sugriv said, you are like a god to me. Everything I have today is because of you. How can I forget what I promised you, Ram? Even as we speak, thousands of warners converge on Kishkanda. The first monkey tribes have already arrived. Soon the city and the hillside will swarm with my people. When they are all here, I will give the command and they will fly to comb the world. Wherever Ravan has hidden her, my warners will discover your Sita. Sugriv took Ram's hand and stroked it. You shall, you shall not have long to wait. Bear with me just 10 days. Ram saw he spoke the truth. He saw the monkey king's love in his eyes and knowing his simple nature, he gladly forgave Sugriv. He put the delay down to his own karam and hugged his friend. At least now he knew what arrangements Sugriv had made to find Sita. This was infinitely better than the hell he had been in, not knowing if the warner meant to keep his word at all. Let's stop our reading here today. So any question, comment? If you don't, then I will just go over the titles of the, from the English, uh, the Hindi Valmiki book, so that you can see that uh, uh, how closely it resembles uh, with Valmiki's uh, Ramayana. Any question? Comment? Great detail. See, most Harshi. of us. This is yeah. Sonia. Har yes, Sonia. This is Sonia. Yes. Harshi. Just a comment, actually. I just noticed that you talked about Sugriv being drunk and all that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just surprised 5,000 years back also. 
alcohol and you know especially men drinking alcohol that was existing huh that men that and we the, saw we saw the women too tara was drunk too yeah yeah maybe i didn't hear that right <laughs> so it's amazing because yeah. uh, i never thought of that yeah so i was surprised to hear that yeah i know the good and bad always there dev and danav always there choice is ours choice is ours which route we want to be on right because this world is made up of these three qualities satvikta rajasikta tamasikta it was it is and it will be yeah so So is it just world a cannot exist the world world cannot exist just with one it has to be all three but which one is so, predominant okay yeah i guess i guess what i was trying to ask was is it just a simile that he was drunk or alcohol really existed and i'm sure it did exist it's nothing new yeah okay i'm sure it existed um, see this this happened way before 5000 years ago but even about 5000 years ago um, um, the whole uh, um, clan of uh, lord krishnas how did they die they got drunk also they got drunk they started fighting uh-huh. killed each other that is true yeah and even now see we don't learn from the history looks like we still keep making the same mistake we got to learn it that these are not good things they were not good things in treta or even satyuga or in dwapar and not in kaliyuga okay all these enemies of ours say kam krodh lo mohankar they are enemies we got to be aware of them rise above them and cultivate the good qualities sham dam prati samadhan tatiksha shraddha those are the good friends of ours and then this is this is what the sadhana we need to do we'll always have all of it in this world okay and no excuse that in kali yug we have it and we cannot stay away from them no this is our job to stay away from these vices this wise these are wises they lose i mean right. we see that sugriv great warrior king also he lost his balance and that's what happens these days too people lose their balance a smart young ch- a, 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 a person goes to college never drank before and starts drinking and we know how many of those kids they ruin their lives and along with their life they ruin their parents life too so these are the vices they were vices they are vices yes jyoti can't hear you ash prem has a question who does it prem prem okay yes prem prem i was very surprised that uh, hanuman ji played a very low key and he didn't remind sugriv about his uh, dharma to and promised to ram just a comment no he did hanuman is the one who came to him he did but he took his time yeah because he because he is still so sugriv is a king yeah so he he took time but still within he time he reminded him yeah. because of hanuman he he sent for all those warnings that's true okay ultimately it was hanuman ji but no matter how smart the minister is king is a king yeah. they are always afraid of the king yeah. okay so but he did he did remind him it was because yeah, of hanuman i think all he did i thought yeah. he took this but yeah, you right yeah no no he sent it before lakshman came it was already 5 days right. he said right so so, so hanuman is the one who saved his life looks like <laughs> yeah and then the why is tara yeah right yeah exactly but one thing i was surprised at was 
how easily Tara forgot I was too, right? Her own uh, husband. She said, I cannot live without you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was only a few months that uh, she... That's why, that's why our role model is who? Sita. Yeah. But she wasn't she Sugreev's wife earlier? No, on? Sugreev's wife was Roma. Okay. okay. Tara oh. was uh, Bali's wife. But... What has been told to us ever since we were, we were little? Be like Sita. Confidence in yourself, strength in yourself, and love for your husband so that nobody can even look at you with a bad eye. Ravan could not. That's why he said, she said that there is this uh, dry grass between, between us. You will get burnt. Thank you. Okay, so we never hear about Tara was very beautiful, they say, one of the uh, Panchkanyas, but uh, nobody said be like Tara. When we were little, we were told to be like uh, Sita. Right? That's what I remember. Right. From my mother. Okay, yes. Uh, Poonam has a question. Poonam? Uh, yes, Poonam. Uh, uh, the word of the monkeys is different from the word of the humans. We just read that. So to expect Tara to behave like a human altogether might not be the right thing to do. Could be. Because he, di he did say that uh, even Sugriv himself, he just commented on that. Uh, I don't know where, which page, where he said, the ways of monkey and men are a word apart. And little could Sagreev understand that seeing him with Ruma would infuri infuriate the human as it did. Mm -hmm. So the emotion part of it seems like is not the same yeah, for, no, for the humans and the monkeys. Yeah, that's another way to look at it. Yeah, definitely. Good, good point. Um, but still, I think these monkeys are not really monkeys, monkeys. These are... Uh, still close to human beings they could speak they knew that the vedas also so they were not the monkeys which we talk about monkeys these days okay like animal monkeys even harshji here tara's diplomacy is just not like a monkey either she yeah. is very smart she is a, she is a woman actually yeah yeah, Tara but is more they, like. But, but they, they are living in the trees and they are. They are uh, no, trees, but no, no, no. They are not monkeys. living in the trees. Among the trees, they have a palace. They are wearing all the ornaments. They are not really like animals, the monkeys, which we think about. But, but Tara like just so either. quickly change. To me, I think that's what happened these days too. So uh, 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 people who change like that, they are like monkeys then. Warner race. The race was Warner. Yeah. But but they Warner race, but still they were in between human beings because they had the uh, uh, the tails though. We see that uh, Hanuman had the tail. The whole story is about burning Hanuman's tail. So they were in between. They were the evolved form of monkeys. Yeah, yeah they could speak. Uh, the world yeah. Human beings. yeah. So they were like in between. They, they had a, a, a little uh, uh, features of monkeys also, their faces, their tails, very strong also. But they could talk like human beings. So they were not fully human beings and they were not completely apes either. Okay. So, but very powerful and they had some uh, extraordinary powers also. So two more things we need to do today. Three more things. Gosh, we are already 11.30. I should have read a little bit less. But let me just go over the in the titles. Tara ka vila. Then it comes Hanuman ji ka Tara ko samjhana aur Tara ka pati ke anugaman ka hi nishche karna. We read about that. Wali ka sugreev aur angat se apne man ki baat kya kar prano ko tiyag de na. Then Tara ka vilap more. 
सुग्रीव का शोक मगन होकर श्री राम से प्राण त्याग के लिए आज्ञा मांगना तारा का श्री राम से अपने वध के लिए प्रार्थना करना और श्री राम का उसे समझाना लक्ष्मण सहित श्री राम का सुग्रीव तारा और अंगद को समझाना तथा वाली के दाह संस्कार के लिए आज्ञा प्रदान करना फिर तारा आदि सहित सब वानरों का वाली के शव को शमशान भूमि में ले जाकर अंगद के द्वारा उसका दाह संस्कार कराना उसे जलांजलि देना so you can see that lot of rituals which human beings do they did that also these days animals don't do those hanuman ji ka sugriv ke abhishek ke liye shri ram chandra ji se kishikanda mein padharne ki prarthna shri ram ka puri mein na jaakar keval anumati dena tat pashchat sugriv aur angad ka abhishek प्रसर वन गिरी पर श्री राम और लक्ष्मण जी की लक्ष्मण की परस्पर बातचीत श्री राम के द्वारा वर्षा ऋतु का वर्णन एंड दैट्स वेयर इट्स मेंशन दैट हाउ ही मिस्ड एंड क्राइड फॉर सीता हनुमान जी के समझाने से सुग्रीव का नील को वानर सैनिकों को एकत्र करने का आदेश देना सो so, हनुमान जी के समझाने पर अदरवाइज सुग्रीव वॉज टोटली लॉस्ट एट दैट पॉइंट इन इंडल्जेंस शरद ऋतु का वर्णन तथा श्री राम का लक्ष्मण को सुग्रीव के पास जाने का आदेश देना सुग्रीव पर लक्ष्मण का रोष श्री राम का उन्हें समझाना लक्ष्मण का किशिकंदा के द्वार पर जाकर अंगद को सुग्रीव के पास भेजना वानरों का भय तथा पलक्ष और प्रभाव का सुग्रीव को कर्तव्य का उपदेश देना हनुमान जी का चिंतित हुए सुग्रीव को समझाना लक्ष्मण का किशिकंदापुरी की शोभा देखते हुए सुग्रीव के महल में प्रवेश करके क्रोध पूर्वक धनुष को टंकारना भयभीत सुग्रीव का तारा को उन्हें शांत करने के लिए भेजना तथा तारा का समझा बुझा कर उन्हें अंतपुर में ले जाना सुग्रीव का लक्ष्मण के पास जाना और लक्ष्मण का उन्हें फटकारना तारा का लक्ष्मण को युक्ति युक्त वचनों द्वारा शांत करना सुग्रीव का अपनी लघुता तथा श्री राम की महत्ता बताते हुए लक्ष्मण से क्षमा मांगना और लक्ष्मण का उनकी प्रशंसा करके उन्हें अपने साथ चलने के लिए कहना सुग्रीव का हनुमान जी को वानर सेना के संग्रह के लिए दोबारा दूत भेजने की आज्ञा देना उन दूतों से राजा की आज्ञा सुनकर समस्त वानरों का किसी कंधा के लिए प्रस्थान और दूतों का लौट कर सुग्रीव को भेंट देने के साथ ही वानरों के आगमन का समाचार सुनाना लक्ष्मण सहित सुग्रीव का भगवान श्री राम के पास आकर उनके चरणों में प्रणाम करना श्री राम का उन्हें समझाना सुग्रीव का अपने किए हुए सैन्य संग्रह विषय उद्योग को बताना और उसे सुनकर श्री राम का प्रसन्न होना so because of hanuman he could do a little bit beforehand and that really brought some peace between them so then up to this point we read in english book so you can see that how closely uh, it has been translated by mr manan okay so 